So the real impact of this ETF and the real impact in the markets for providing an ill alt season isn't priced into the current event, it's going to come from the liquidity Hello everyone, seasoned crypto and Bitcoin trader Michael Van de Poppy discusses the latest Ethereum ETF approval, its implications on Bitcoin and other altcoins and near-term price predictions. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. When is alt season starting? Altcoins do run in certain cycles which used to be referred to as an alt season but it's just a matter of confidence and positive sentiment. First part of the cycle Bitcoin starts to move and is actually moving. After that the rotation starts to happen to Ethereum and after that the remainder of the markets wake up which is comparable to the altcoin cycles that we know and it's all coming down to having confidence in the markets. The past three months there was no confidence in the markets at all as the expectations were that the Ethereum ETF would have been declined. Through which the Bitcoin dominance has readied and it has hit a cycle high at 58% providing a massive crash on altcoins in April. During these periods altcoins were sold off as people were anticipating a higher return to be made in Bitcoin after the spot ETF was approved. Some altcoins even had a correction of more than 60%. Due to the fact that altcoins have been suffering, there is no confidence in the altcoins and that translates to the rest of the markets. This particular psychology goes hand in hand with the interest from retail in the markets. At this point it's close to zero as the volumes in Q1 have decreased substantially compared to the Q4 volumes of 2021. The volumes for retail are still down 70% compared to 2021, while the institutional volume has increased with 50%. Retail confidence is usually coming back when the altcoins start to move, and altcoins start to move when Ethereum starts to move, and that's currently the case as the Ethereum ETF has been approved. Earlier this week that was taking place. Additionally, the House has voted positively on crypto regulation through the FIT21 bill which had bipartisan support. Donald Trump accepts crypto for its presidential race and all of a sudden a U-turn has been made on the adoption of crypto as Ethereum might become a commodity rather than a security. This leads to the ultimate question when is alt season starting? The Ethereum ETF has been approved and on the 23rd of May it has been a legendary day as it's signaling a lot of potential momentum for the crypto markets and there's a lot of potential upside. In a matter of three days a complete U-turn has been taking place for well everything in the US and um, the government in the US and I just want to discuss everything that has been taking place and cover a few questions from your side as well, which is why is Ethereum not moving after the approval at all? Um, so let's just go through all the different chapters of the past week to see where we stand. And the first thing was the message from Eric Belkines and um, yeah, the two Bloomberg watchers or the ETF watchers and analysts that all of a sudden said that they increased the odds of a spot ether ETF approval to 75% up from 25% as they heard chatter this afternoon that the SEC could be doing a 180 on this increasingly political issue so now everyone's scrambling um, including the fact that this tweet came out which was from Nate Garrisey which is the SEC decision deadline this week is on the spot ETH ETFs the SEC must approve both the 19B4S, which is the exchange rule changes, and the S1s, which is the registration statements for ETFs to launch. Technically possible for the SEC to approve the first ones and then slow play the S1s, especially given reported lack of engagement here. So that is something that we will refer to at some point, 
but, and the 19 V4s as well. But this is what started on May the 20th, in which um, later that day, also Eric mentioned that the exchanges were asked to update the 19B4 filings on an accelerated basis by the US Securities and Exchange Commission. Three people familiar with the situation told Coindesk, suggesting they may be moving to approve these applications ahead of a key deadline this Thursday. And the deadline on Thursday was one of the applications that had to be approved, delayed or denied. And you need to remember, they delayed the one of Invesco earlier this month with 60 days, which technically signaled that there wasn't a denial across, um, but actually there was a potential approval going to come. Then on May the 21st, all of a sudden, the presidential campaign of Donald Trump started to wake up and they accept Bitcoin and also other cryptos. Um, this might be in light of what uh, happened the other day where a student was asked about crypto and where Donald Trump said we need to embrace crypto and shouldn't be fighting it, but we need to make sure that we get a framework. So this technically accepts um, crypto as a whole. Um, it also stated demonstrating President Trump's success as a champion of American freedom and innovation. We proudly offer you a chance to contribute to the campaign with cryptocurrency. Saving our nation from Biden's failures requires your support. As Biden passed regulations and red tape on all of us, President Trump stands ready to embrace new technologies that will make America great again. So this came out, which is from the Republicans, and all of a sudden everything starts to change within the Democrats and also within the government as a whole. Because we had the actual case earlier of a rejection of the ETH ETF and also the possibility that Biden was going to veto the um, stance on the FIT21 bill, which was going to take place at a later point during the week. So this took place and then the next few things started to happen, of which the first one was that particular FIT21 bill, which is... The FIT21 bill is comparable to MICAR in Europe. It's a start of a regulatory framework for adoption of crypto. And if this was going to be rejected, technically you would say, okay, crypto is going to be banned in the US, which if it gets a vote, instead of having the same as what it is right now, which having a complete ban, like almost, only Coinbase is acceptable over there and a few other ex exchanges. But by approving this bill, it's actually saying, hey, we want to continue provide a solid framework where crypto can actually become larger. So this um, voting took place on May the 23rd, well, actually May the 22nd, which uh, was won by 278 to 136, in which this is actually the biggest day of the week because this entails the, what I mentioned, the fact that we can get a regulatory framework in which we are designed to continue building. So this is super positive. Then the next day, we had another bill which uh, prevents the Fed from creating a central bank digital currency, which is a huge accomplishment. They are even forced to use a public network or a public the blockchain instead if they want to adopt and create a stable coin. Technically, you would say, we got them already, USDC, USDT. Not sure whether they're going to be using it, probably more likely that it will be USDC instead of USDT. But anyway, um, this is also very positive and it's going super fast one after another, which um, ultimately ended up by the exact same day, a little bit later, which is the approval. Um, the document here says, Self-regulatory organizations, NISE, ARCA, um, the NASDAQ stock market, CBOE exchange order granting accelerated approval of proposed rule changes as modified by amendments thereto to list and trade shares of ETH-based exchange-traded products. So the 19B4 files, the rule changes, as you can see here, the rule changes, those were approved. And that is a positive signal for everything within the crypto ecosystem because 
technically this means that there is a potential likelihood that we can classify um, ether as a potential um, commodity instead of a security and if we go towards the btf e uh, btc etf approval we can see that the etf approval took place market started to correct and after a while when the listing actually started to happen that's when we saw the big influx so the real impact of this etf and the real impact in the markets for providing an ill alt season isn't priced into the current event it's going to come from the liquidity that's going to be provided by the listing in a few weeks or in a few months time so the approval is a great light it's a strong bet to have ethereum in your portfolio at this point i'm more than confident of having the actual position of being into altcoins at this stage but it doesn't suggest that if the approval takes place we need to start running instantly we can easily just have a consolidation and then we start running through which this, this is just a period of delay taking place. And there's also another question, which is, are we going to see other ETFs being approved as well, or other coins that are going to get an ETF? The next question is, which next altcoin or basket is going to get an ETF as well? So that is going to be approached because if Ethereum is going to be classified as a commodity, the chances are significant that another altcoin is going to get it as well. So earlier in this week, we had a very interesting conversation taking place on CNBC in which a discussion took place which altcoin is going to be next, whether it's going to be Solana that's going to be getting the next ETF. So let's take a look at what they have been saying. The SEC is starting to amend these S1s. Uh -huh. So I don't know if the Ethereum ETF gets approved today, you know, next week or the right, week right. after. It will get approved at some point in time. But also the trade now is who's next, right? Exactly. Who's well, who is be? next? Because, well, it, it, you know, yeah. and, and I was talking about yesterday. Now it's almost time for truly my, my ETF, my blended ETF of which, you know, yep. which crypto asset it is. And, and so who is next, though? I mean, I think you've got to think about Solana as probably the next one, right? I mean, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana are probably the big three for this cycle. Um, but I'll give you even a stranger, or maybe not stranger, but a, maybe an unintuitive way to think about it, Robinhood and Coinbase. Because now we have some clarity about what a security is and what isn't. And they'll be able to list a lot more crypto, which means a lot more trading for them. So I think they're the biggest beneficiaries from the change that's gone on. So BK, really glad to have you here. Big fan of your work. I'm the SEC is starting to amend these So they started to discuss that instead of having an, uh, well, actually just to have a Solana ETF taking place, and to be fair, I believe that the actual chances of having a Solana ETF are quite slim um, in, in such a way that if you have a classification of Ethereum as a commodity, the chance of a Solana ETF have technically increased. Um, however, Solana has the fact of VC investing and all the seed rounds, etc. Et it's not say, I'm not saying it's an actual reason of not getting one, but if we go down the list, then we might even suggest that if XRP wins the case, which is almost 99% sure at this point, but if XRP wins that actual case, it makes more sense to get an either an XRP or a Litecoin ETF instead of Solana. I'm not saying it's gonna happen at some point or at all, any, any moment at all. I think Solana is gonna get one, significantly one, but I'm not sure whether it's going to be the next one. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Michael Van de Poppy. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.